Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another first impression video. I'm really excited about today's video. I have three things that I'm going to be doing first impressions on. The first is this guy right here, which is the Great Bear Soap and Splash by Murphy and McNeil and Black Mountain Shaving. Then I've got this puppy right here, which is the Trotter Handcrafts Odyssey Brush with a 26 millimeter Timberwolf synthetic knot. And then lastly, I have the Caduan Workshop, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, Lone Wolf Shaving Bowl. I'm also going to be looking at the Yates 921 M-Plate Rainbow PVD, and of course the Dracot V2 Prototype. All right, first let's talk about this bowl for a second real quick. So uh, I did the lather off camera, and I gotta say, it was a very different experience. I can't tell if it's because it's a new base with the Kodiak base on the Murphy and McNeil Great Bear or a new brush and not, or if it's the bowl. I think a, the bowl has a lot to do with it. Um, there's a little more work than I expected or th that I'm used to with my Wind Horse Pottery Bowl. Um, but I think I attribute that a lot to these really deep agitation ridges. They really, especially in the early proto lather stages, they hold a lot of that lather. Um, and so it took several water additions, probably like about five or six water additions. And then it just kept building and building and building the lather. And you can probably see it now. It's a very dense kind of low structure, um, beautiful lather, very rich. I imagine you'll get a lot out of that. And then of course the uh, Trotter Handcrafts Timberwolf brush did a great job there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, build a lather a little bit more on my face for this first pass, just so I can talk about the brush too. And I'll probably do the second and third passes off camera, just to keep that video length down, you know, to that nice uh, under 20 minute sort of mark. So first impressions here with the brush, and I'm struggling to not talk about the fragrance on the soap right now, or the soap base, we'll get to that. But on the brush, um, this knot feels very, very nice. The synthetic knot, very soft um, and a pretty, you know, pretty nice thick knot too. It definitely is holding a lot of lather and it's, uh, yeah, it definitely was nice to work up that lather. It feels like a really good synthetic knot for sure. Definitely on par with my Trafalgar T3, um, which I've been using for most of these videos so far. So I gotta say I'm very pleased with it so far. The grip is really nice. Just holds in those fingers, you know, as one might expect. Let me go ahead and add a tiny bit of water here and just do a, a bit of lather building on the face. See how that splay works? Oh yeah, that's a very nice splay. And actually on the splay, I'm gonna say that it's probably um, a notch above the T3 knot. It just feels softer and denser and I can feel a lot more lather kind of being built up there with that water addition. And uh, yeah, very, very nice. I'm definitely gonna enjoy using this brush a lot more. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Feels very, very, very good. Um, it's good for painting too, not just, you know, splaying and building the lather, but kind of just painting some of that extra lather around on the face too. So this is my first Trotter Handcrafts brush by Paul and uh, it's definitely a winner. I'll be curious to see, you know, what some of those brushes with the Badger knots are like as well. I know a bunch of people got those T1s and those seem like a really, really great knot as well. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and paint the upper lip and then we'll get started with the shaving. Okay, now let's talk about this Great Bear Soap. So the Kodiak, Kodiak base, this is my first time using a Murphy and McNeil and Black Mountain. And this base feels very nice. Uh, the lather felt dense and rich. It lathered up nicely. Took a lot of water, as I mentioned. I just kept adding water and that was great. Feels nice and smooth gliding on the skin there. 
the, the residual slickness is maybe a tiny bit on the low side compared to some of my other top bases. But nothing really noteworthy. Now for the fragrance on this soap. Uh, it's a very complex profile. In the top notes, we have honey, cinnamon, bergamot, and osmanthus, which is a flower. And then in the middle notes, I believe we have plum, fig, rum, labdanum, and artemisia, which are another flower and a plant. I'm not very familiar with those two scent notes. And then in the base, we've got tonka bean, vanilla, cashmere woods, starting in here with the Yates PBD. So yeah, tonka bean, vanilla, cashmere woods, and patchouli. So a few lighter floral notes, a couple spicy notes with the cinnamon and the patchouli. A few sweeter notes with the tonka, the vanilla, the honey. And then one or two base here notes too. We've got some rum and we got some cashmere woods in there. Now, initially I was on the fence with this fragrance because of the sweeter notes. It's sounding kind of almost jammy, like a, like a rich jam with the honey and the cinnamon and the florals and the tonka and vanilla. And I'm not usually um, a gourmand fragrance person, but on occasion when the gourmand fragrance is well blended, I'm pleasantly surprised. Tenoir Benin by Noble Otter was one of those occasions. And I would say the Great Bear is something like that. It's not as strong in the scent strength, in my opinion, as Tenoir Evigny. Tenoir Evigny is like really up there. It's, you know, it's like an eight or a nine. I'd still call this one high medium, um, but in terms of the sweetness, it's just very subtly blended overall. There isn't a, an in-your-face cloying sweetness. There isn't a pungent spiciness. It's just very nicely subtly blended. And, you know, you might even think this is like a winter fragrance, kind of like a Vespers or something where it's meant to like warm you up or like a warmest regard or something. But I really do agree with some of the other reviews that this could be sort of an all year round fragrance. It's so nicely blended that I wouldn't say it's even kind of as in your face as, as um, a Vespers, for instance. But it's a really, really interesting fragrance journey. I have to say, as I was painting it back on my face again, you know, it would start off with the cinnamon and I'd be like, okay, that's, that's cinnamon. But then the cinnamon doesn't linger along, like around long enough to really kind of make you go, okay, that's too much cinnamon. It kind of immediately gets taken over or replaced by another one of the notes. So you'll maybe get like, um, some honey coming in there, or some of the rum, some of the tonka and vanilla, and and then it'll drift kind of back and forth between a bunch of these different fragrances. So it's really taking you on a journey. Also, I just realized they start going against the grain. Um, a little prematurely. I should have been doing my across the grain pass here, but I'm just gonna go with it. And we'll do across the grain for the third pass this time. Um, 
Now in the razor, in both razors right now, I'm actually using a second use Nasset blade um, instead of a first use, which I've been doing pretty much for the whole blade series. But because I'm not doing a first impression of a blade in this video, I'm just going ahead with a second use Nasset blade in uh, both razors. And these were actually the Nasset blades that I used for the first time in the last video. I will say I dinged myself right here, but I had like uh, some kind of bumps or pimples going on there. You can see I have a few of them around, so I won't fault the razor or the blade for that one. I have to say that was actually pretty nice going against the grain um, on a second pass instead of a third pass. Okay, Yates 921, M plate, rainbow PVD. So I did do one video about the 921, uh, a first impression uh, a while back, but it wasn't really a first impression, it was what I was calling hot takes, where I just kind of do a speed shave and then give my takes afterwards. I didn't really stick with that format, I just didn't like it that much, I prefer to kind of talk while I'm shaving. So I decided I'd go ahead and do more of a long form of the 921. So this razor is four inches long handle, and it's actually a little thinner than the half inch standard for most handles. It's made by Yates Precision Manufacturing, which is a family-owned machine shop out of Pennsylvania, USA, Jake and Ashley Yates. They're actually the ones who are going to be making the production version of the Dracant, and they make great work. This is a 316 stainless steel razor with a 0.68 millimeter blade gap. A traditional angled head, so it's steeper than the Dracant and some of the other razors I've been using lately. And I have to say that while it is uh, actually a smaller blade gap, it does feel more blade forward and maybe even a little more aggressive than the Dracant. Just got kind of a bit hung up on the hair there around the chin on that against the grain pass. But it is a very, very nice razor. This uh, PVD finish is a special process, finishing process called physical vapor deposition. Which basically deposits the finish on top of the surface and creates this nice rainbow color. And now let's go for this Great Bear aftershave. Hmm. It's a little bit more work to get it out than usual. Ooh. Nice alcohol forward punch on the face there. Hmm. Nice fragrance. I think I'm getting a little bit more of that vanilla and tonka on the splash. And yeah, the cinnamon takes a bit more of a back seat. Um, a little bit more vanilla forward, a little bit more citrus forward on the splash, but very nice kind of rounding it out. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the first impressions here, the bowl. Really enjoyed it. It was a little more work than my um, Windhorse Pottery Bowl. I think mostly due to these deep lather or agitation ridges. Um, which just, you know, give me a little bit more work 
trying to work up that lather because in the early stages, the proto lather really gets stuck in between them. And so it required some more water additions, but very nice bowl overall. The Trotta brush was great, was very, very nice, um, performs just as I might expect, uh, a nice high quality synthetic knot, and of course the feeling is a very classic shape, so uh, I wouldn't expect anything less than that in terms of the performance. And now let's talk about the shave. So this one was actually a little bit surprising considering that in my last video, the Nasset first use blade inside of the Dracant and also the Tatara Masamune gave me probably the closest and smoothest shave that I've gotten in this entire video series so far. Um, whereas this time with the second use Nassets, both the Dracant and the Yates 921 PVD um, nicked me a little bit, although it's not too bad. It already seems to be kind of calming down now. Um, but also wasn't quite as efficient or as smooth as the last time. I don't really know what that was, um, it might just be again because I was, I was stupid and I went against the grain and then across the grain instead of following my normal order and going across the grain and then against the grain. Um, it could be that I was using a new base and a new bowl and a new brush and there are a lot of variables there so I don't know or it could just be you know second use NASA blades perform differently than first use NASA blades. I can't say what it was um, you know it's not a bad shave I would call this DFS it's just not as good as the first use NASA blade that I did last time. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's it for the shave this time. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like if you like it, give a follow, and I will see you in the next video.